The International Harvester Scout is an off-road icon that first hit the trails in 1981. Think of it as a rugged cousin of the Jeep Wrangler. Tough, straightforward, and built to conquer any terrain. Over the years, models like the Scout 80 and Scout 2 established themselves as rivals to the Ford Bronco, but production ended in 1980. Now fast forward to 2021 and Volkswagen decided to revive the legend. They're launching an all electric Scout brand slated to debut in 2027. These new Scouts will be fully electric SUVs and trucks designed for off-road enthusiasts and loaded with modern tech. But hold on, doesn't that sound familiar? Rivian's already claimed this market. Combining electric power with serious off-road capabilities, well, let's compare the two adventure-ready brands and I'll give you my take on whose adventure vehicle is better. We have to start at the design. Scout is embracing a rugged, iconic design with a focus on multifunctional spaces, marketing its vehicle as connection machines for gatherings and adventure. The platform is built to accommodate up to 35 inch tires, provide over a foot of ground clearance, and allow for nearly three feet of water fording. It includes features like front sway bar disconnects, front and rear mechanical lockers, competitive approach and departure angles, and robust suspension options. And what's really cool is you have the option for a bench seat up front. True to its roots, Scout vehicles are equipped with mechanical door handles, grab bars, switches, and dials, delivering a hands-on experience reminiscent of the classic off-roaders. Their frunk even has a slide-out seat, which is pretty cool, I must say, for tailgating. Well, frunk gating? In contrast, Rivian takes a sleek, tech forward approach, targeting both luxury and rugged utility markets. With a strong emphasis on adventure and functionality, Rivian has minimized physical switches and buttons in favor of digital controls via an on screen user interface. Even the doors now operate electrically, moving away from traditional mechanical systems. Let's take a look at the dimensions. Both the Scout and Rivian seem to be very similar when it comes to size, with Rivian measuring slightly more, except for the truck bed, which is a foot longer in the Scout Terra. We do see that the Scout Traveler, which is the SUV, and the Scout Terra, the truck, are the same width. And then we do notice that the truck is a little bit longer, very similar to how the R1T is longer than the R1S. Both designs are stunning. The key differences lie in the control interface. Scout offers physical buttons, dials, and switches, while Rivian opts for an on-screen digital control. I lean towards the Rivian approach, as my ideal car should be pre-configured to my preferences, minimizing the need for frequent adjustments. How are these vehicles built? Well, Scout employs a traditional body-on-frame design, which mounts the vehicle's body on a separate rigid frame, common in trucks and off-road SUVs for increasing durability and load capacity. The Scout also features solid rear axles for added toughness in challenging off-road conditions. In contrast, Rivian uses a unibody construction with an independent air suspension system. A unibody design integrates the body and the frame into a single unit, offering better on-road comfort, handling, and weight efficiency. Rivian's air suspension allows adjustable ride height for different terrains, enhancing both off-road capability and on-road smoothness. A quick look at towing capacity just demonstrates how Rivian is able to provide up to a thousand ish pounds more for towing but the scout can actually have an increased payload capacity of 2,000 pounds versus Rivian's 1,760 pounds. Both vehicles appear highly capable with subtle differences in design philosophy. Rivian is likely to maintain its edge in on-road and off-road comfort, but we can't be certain until Scout's production model debuts in 2027. Currently, Scout remains a concept, promising on paper, but that's about it right now. You can't look at these vehicles and not think, what's the 0 to 60 time? Scout offers as quick as 3.5 seconds, powered by nearly 1,000 pound-feet of torque. 
Meanwhile, Rivian offers dual motor or quad motor options, delivering excellent traction and torque. The new quad motor accelerates from zero to 60 in just 2.5 seconds. That's a whole second difference. So if you want performance in a truck or SUV like this, Rivian is the choice. Taking a look at range, these are all estimates for Scout, but they say that their fully electric models will offer up to 350 miles of range with an extended range version offering over 500 miles using a built-in gas generator. Well, what does that really mean? Scout's Harvester system includes a small gas engine to recharge the battery, providing extended range without compromising on electric performance, something that Rivian doesn't offer. So if you think of a hybrid, it's very similar, but the gas generator is actually feeding into the battery, which is then causing the car to move. That way you still get the electric performance. As far as Rivian's ranges go, depending on the battery type and the wheels that you have, you could get between 260 miles to 410 miles depending on your configuration. In my personal view, it's all about electric range. My goal in going electric is to stay fully electric for sustainability reasons. I understand that some people need extra range and Scout's implementation of a gas generator can be beneficial for them. However, I give the edge to Rivian as sustainability is a core value for me. Let's talk a little bit about software. Now, both brands employ modern software architecture to provide over-the-air updates and remote diagnostics. But it's actually really interesting because Rivian has a hand in Scout's product. Scout blends tactile controls with a digital interface through their Scout community UX, aiming for a simple, intuitive experience. Scout is actually the first that we've seen that's using Rivian software enhanced by its collaboration efforts with Volkswagen in their joint venture. We really don't know much about this, but when you look at the screens in the Scout, you can tell it was designed by someone at Rivian. It looks like a modified version for the Scout which is exactly what they're aiming to do with that joint venture. We have to talk about pricing. Scout is actually going to a direct sales network through Scout Motors, so you don't have to go into a dealership to purchase. Entry models are going to be priced between 50,000 to 51,000 with high-end models staying below 60,000. Reservations are open with production starting in 2027. Now, just a reminder, this is a concept and it's not coming out for two more years. So I can almost guarantee those prices may not be what you see when it comes out. Let's compare it a little bit with Rivian. Rivian's R1S base price starts at around $75,000 and the R1T starts around $69,000 with higher trim options available for both configurations. Both companies are committed to building their vehicles in America, aiming to deliver high quality electric vehicles for off-road adventures. Whether you choose in the future to go with Scout, or with Rivian, these EVs represent the next generation of rugged, adventure-ready vehicles. Looking at both of these vehicles head-to-head, -head, I would still stick with a Rivian at this point. I think it offers more of what I'm looking for in a vehicle, but Scout is definitely a brand to keep an eye on in the future, and I think that it just brings more competition to the field, pushing each company to progress more and more. So that's always good. We want competition. But that wraps it up for this video talking about Scout and Rivian. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button below. It really helps support my channel. And please subscribe for more Rivian content. Remember, adventure is always out there.